yn enw'r tad a'r mab a'r ystryd glaw. Amen. A warm welcome to this stream service of Holy Communion for Sunday the 19th of July. It's a joy to have you worshipping with us, albeit virtually. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and also with you. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's confess our sins in penitence and faith to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, we we have sinned sinned in thought, word and and deed, and and have have failed to do what what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. A fort at Leogville, sin madai i bawb sin wir ed i feiriol, a digar harfech, a rhyd hai o bechod, eich cadan hai mewn daioni, a cadw yn y bywyd tragwyddol. Trwy yes i gris dein hardwydd. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dylai'r doethineb Solomon. A herwydd yn rhan i ti, sus a gofl am bob un, nid oes yr un diw i ti gael dangos iddo nad oedd dy ddyfrenad yn anghyfion. A herwydd y mae dynerf di yn ffynhonell cyfiawnder, a thbenar y gwyliaeth yn peri i ti arbed pawb. Pan am hyr cyfiawnder dallu, yn y byddai'n datguddio dy nerf, yn rhydd y rhai sy'n gwybod, yr wyt yn condeimio o hargwriad, ond yr wyt i yn dyben ar dwywynedd nerthol yn barnu'r dirio, ac yn ei rheoli ac ymatol mawr, a fod allu ar goed i ti pryd y mynu. Ysgais dy bobl trwy'r fath weithriodan, fod yr rhaid i'r dyn cyfiawn garu a gyd dy a therais i thweibion o eithion hyderus dy fod yr rhaid ediferwch am bechodau. Dyma air yr arglwydd. Diolch a fo i ddiw. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. He put 
before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let everyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. God, our Mab, a connect for a speak Amen. For some reason, reading Jesus' parable, our Gospel, reading for today took me back to my early teens school holidays seven long weeks of doing nothing until my mother as mothers do found me a job it was two or three miles away from home and i used to walk there along the seashore which took me about an hour each way to cut the grass for an elderly couple who lived in a wonderful house right on the water's edge It seemed to be always hot and sunny whenever I went there and I would arrive tired, perspiring and then had to push this heavy old-fashioned lawnmower up and down, then trim the edges with the scissors and lastly, the bit I really hated, they would ask me to weed and all this for the measly sum of half a crown or twelve and a half p. Why do we have to have weeds? Why can't we just have plants and bushes and colourful flowers growing? No matter how carefully we have prepared the soil, nurtured the seed, it always appears weeds to spoil the show. It's like the cussedness in life that appears to thwart all our hard work and our best attempts. We try to do the right thing, but the outcome is the exact opposite. Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? asked the owner's servants. Where then did the weeds come from? Do you want us to go? And pull them up, they asked. And the answer, in the parable, was no. And so the weeds planted by the enemy were allowed to grow along with the weeds until they could be dealt with and separated at harvest time. I always thought that the difference between a parable and that allegory was that a parable had one clear, though disguised, meaning. Whereas an allegory 
had several. So this parable of the weeds, as it is known, could then also be known as the allegory of the weeds, for it raises several points of discussion. And the first of those is for the church. You should never mix politics with religion, says the old saying. And indeed, society is quick to condemn the church if it dares to raise its head above the parapet on political issues like the ills in our society. The church should and does acknowledge them and speak out about them, but must never be involved with any kind of uprooting of them. We think of the example of Jesus in his earthly life. Just as there is with us today, so it was in his time. There would have been plenty of social abuses. But Jesus didn't try and ruthlessly uproot the causes, but had his own way of dealing with things. We can think of Matthew as a tax collector who was probably morally and financially corrupt in skimming off a share for himself of the heavy burden of taxes that were imposed on the people by the Romans. But Jesus did not denounce him publicly, have him hauled off to prison. No, he had a better way. He called him to be his follower. And Matthew indeed became a faithful disciple. And secondly, there's a lesson for governments at all levels in this story. Those whose responsibility it is not to just to recognise what is wrong in the communities which make up our country, but to deal with it and to ensure that the law is upheld. But there has to be tolerance and sensitivity in the way they act and often their role is to provide calm, to stand back, to ensure that actions are measured and fully thought through rather than a ruthless uprooting. And thirdly, today's parable tells us something about God. Surely all sermons should tell us something about God. It tells us that God is not ruthless. We often mess up his plans for the world and fail to live as he would wish. But he is not ruthless. We squeeze all we can of the resources he has given us for our daily needs, which often leads to wants in other parts of the world. But God is not ruthless. This is God's world and he has created it. He has sown good seed in his field and he certainly does not want the whole crop jeopardised by our ruthless and impulsive actions. So the parable speaks to us about the nature of God and surely its message to us is one of hope. We also consider the storyteller himself, the one who relayed this parable. He was a gentleman, but could also be a strong character. He never treated anyone roughly, not even hardened criminals or the worst kind of sinners. And he showed respect for the weak and timid amongst us. And all this all goes well and gives us hope that when the final sorting out of the wheat from the chaff comes, when we meet him face to face, then we may find tenderness, patience, love 
and forgiveness and not a ruthless uprooting. This is the gospel we are privileged to proclaim. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. God of love and hope, you made the world and care for all creation. But the world feels strange right now. People are still worried that they might get ill. Others are anxious for their families and friends. Be with them and help them to find peace. We continue to pray for all key workers and for the scientists as they strive to find a suitable vaccine. Thank you that even in these anxious times you are with us. Help us all to put our trust in you and keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God and Lord of life, we pray for the gift of courage to face up to and cope with illness, especially as the COVID-19 pandemic continues. We pray for all those we know and for those we do not know, including those on our own prayer lists at this time. May, Gina, Lennox, Rowan, Stella and family, Faith, Pat, Sean, Megan, Marion, Mary, Michael and Rosita, Cynthia, Theo, Janet, Rosemary, Sandra Wood's daughter Heather and her family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, give us ears to hear and minds to understand the message of immortality for the children of your kingdom, so that we may look forward with patience and confidence to that time when we may join you in the peace of eternity. Today we pray for those who have recently died and are on that journey to you, making known to you today Maureen McCullough, Linda Banks, Maya Jones, and Pauline Bates. May they all rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, hear our prayer. In our wider Anglican community, we pray today for the Episcopal Church of the USA in the Philippines, for Joe Antiwa Pakao, Prime Bishop of the Philippines. We also give thanks for the people of St. Mary's Church in Llanfair, Taihan, 
and the extensive reordering project to make the church more welcoming for their community use. We also pray for the openness and cooperation within mission areas as we all move forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray today for guidance in the way forward. Make us conscious of each other's needs as we seek to find safe and helpful ways of coming back to worship together in our various church buildings. We give thanks for Tad Hugh, Reverend Stuart, Reverend Richard, Father Duller, and to all those who have worked so diligently over the past months to bring us our services, worship services and notice sheets. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Lord, Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, this is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come on to Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. He is your eternal word, 
Through him you created the universe and formed us men and women in your own image. You sent him to be our saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross, he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering and death. On the first day of the week, you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Through him, you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Cluny dard Neville, trui es igrist de var ben hadluith, trui noed der bin en habeth of oliant, a chani ata trui nef de ysbryd, i rodion hyn o vara a gwyn, fod i ni ei gorff a'i waedef, who, in the same night as he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Arin bod, ar o'r swper fe gymer o'r cwpan, ar o'i diolch i ti. Fe rhoi fydd ynt gan ddweud, yfwch o hwn bab, oherwydd hwn yw fy ngwaed i, gwaed y cyfamod newydd, a dywellti drosoch, a thros lawer er maddeiant pechodau. Gwnewch hyn, bob tro ar yfwch ef, er cof amdan. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come in glory. Bethi o dad. Gan gofio angau a chybol ac at gyfodiad dy fath. Offrom o'n i ti mewn diolch a bara hwn a'r cwpan hwn dy rhoddion i ni. A diolch o'n i ti am ein cyfri yn deilwng i sefyll yn dy wir a chwasanaethu. Am ond y sbidlan a'r bawb ohono sy'n rhan i'r bara hwn a'r cwpan hwn. Crefha ei ffydd. Gwna ni'n un a chroesawa ni a chwll bobl i deirnas o gonefus dy fab. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the language of our hearts, let us pray with confidence to the Father. Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and, and ever. Amen. We 
break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are many, we are one body, for so we, we all share in the one, one bread. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us, and feed on him in our hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. A form of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and an ending peace. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And just before we go forward on our journey, may I thank Martin, for preaching to us, Harve for reading for us, and Elaine for deaconing and leading our worship and reading the gospel. And you all for joining us. Let's hope very soon we'll all be able to worship in our churches or you'll be able to watch a live service being streamed directly to your technology. The Lord bless you and keep watch over you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look lovingly on you and give you peace. A bendit diw hotha thiog, a tard, a marb, a rysbryd glaw, a fôn eich plith, a cadrig o gydach chi, an mastad. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.